So you want to get a head start on your Genshin journey and have some of the strongest lineups of characters to make exploration and challenge content a breeze, while also having some flexibility to pull for whatever characters that you like, then you've come to the right place. My name is Psyche, and today, after playing the game since 2021, and with a combined playtime of 200 hours, here are my top recommendations for a strong baseline roster of characters that anyone could start using right away and still have a lot of accessibility to other characters that you may like to join your party. First of all, if you're a player that don't care about the meta at all and strictly only pull for characters that you like, then turn off this video right now and go pull your favorite waifu or husband though. Because watching this video will only make you mad. Unless you want to be, of course. I come from the perspective that while I do pull for characters that I personally enjoy, whether it may be the gameplay, personality, or the assets, I also value convenience and comfort in my playstyle. I'm going to get the highly desired characters to make building my teams a lot easier. And then I'm going to focus on the characters I personally want to ensure a smooth journey into any teams or playstyles. The goal of this video is to define what I personally consider as the baseline that I believe all players should have because having it will allow you to open up more teams and tailor to your preferred playstyles to whatever characters that you might want later. Basically, focusing on the characters that you need and then focusing on the characters that you want. Of course, there is no objectively best character in the game. You can, of course, make the argument that pulling for anyone is optional. But then again, playing Genshin is also optional. This is my subjective list, and I will be using data from Kachain Main, as well as mixing some statistics and personal experiences into the equation. First, let's define what is considered as a strong character. You may think of a unit that dishes out the most damage, or the unit that's considered the main DPS of the team. However, after playing numerous gacha games, there's a common pattern that surrounds what role plays the strongest part in the game. Let's show an example from Fate Grand Order. What you'll notice is that the characters that are deemed the most powerful in the game are not actually damage dealers, but rather supports. The reason being that you can pair support characters with anyone, but damage dealers must be paired with a support to reach their full potential meaning support characters will get an edge since they're used more universally. Imagine a support character being the engine of a car, while the main DPS unit being the car itself. You can put that engine in any car and the car will run, but a car without an engine can't hope to go anywhere. With that philosophy in mind, let's start with the list. Starting out with some 4 stars, it's to no one's surprise that the top performing 4 stars came from Genshin's early days, where they clearly will rebalance them. Bennett, Xingqiu, and Shanling the holy trinity that just keeps on giving. Of course, every player gets a free copy of Shanling, but you'll have to rely on the other two from dropping from the gacha, or buying them from the shop. I've seen some guides where it's recommended that you re-roll your account until you get a standard 5-star character, but honestly, I would just re-roll for one of these two. Bandit is an absolute powerhouse that boosts your unit's attack, and essentially makes your team immortal since you just can't take damage while his burst is up. Xingqiu providing some of the best hydro support giving constant applications, defense buff, and even some healing. Xiangling still being one of the only off-field pyro applicators that also hits like a truck. Except that truck comes around every two seconds. What was that damage, my guy? You might also be wondering about Kuki, who is another prominently used 4-star in recent Abyss usage charts. But she's good only because Dendro exists in the game, so for absolute beginners, she might not be a good target to focus on. Let's go to the 5-stars now. Being extremely rare and often quite expensive, it's hard for me to just tell you which ones to pull for, because I don't want anyone to pull for someone and then not liking their playstyle and complaining in the comments. The 5 stars I'm recommending today are the ones I use the most, sees the most amount of play in the Abyss, and used in multiple teams with different playstyles. I'm only stating out the stuff I personally know, and you can form your own conclusions whether or not you want to follow them. First up, we have Nahida. She is probably the closest we'll get to a 100% usage rate in the Abyss. This listing counts usage rate as the percentage of people that owns said character using them in Endgame Spiral Abyss content. In the 3.7 listing, Nahida received a whopping 98.8% .8 usage rate, meaning almost everyone that owns Nahida has used her in the Abyss. That is crazy. The reason why she's so meta-defining is because her Dendro application is like none other. 
If you're a stingy person that just wants to experience all the new playstyles Dendro has to offer, Nahida is the only unit you'll ever need. I've done a guide on this, but having Nahida in your roster will enable so many new teams and archetypes that no matter what lineup of characters you have, she will find a spot to fit in. So Nahida, highly highly recommend. She's an Archon, so reruns probably happen frequently. Definitely worth saving up for. Next up, depending on when you're watching this, his banner may still be up, but it's Kazuha. I only got him this patch, and I gotta say, I didn't know what I've been missing out on. Historically, if I needed an Anemo character, I just use Sucrose. While you can definitely make the argument that she is better in some scenarios, and maybe even require a higher skill ceiling to use than Kazuha, their difference in usage rate statistically is night and day. By running the Veridescent set on him, you can increase the damage your team does with a particular element. Not only that, he has amazing grouping potentials. And this is something you can use in both overworld and challenge content. Got a bunch of enemies you need to defeat for your dailies? Hold Kazuha's E and watch everything die, and have their drops delivered right to your feet. You can even use Kazuha's skill mid-air to propel yourself upwards, making exploration easier by being able to stay in the air indefinitely. From a gameplay perspective, Kazuha is one of the best support characters you can have in almost any team. And while I didn't do a guide on him, he is in my opinion, the only other 5 star character other than Nahida that I would give a 5 out of 5 rating on. Superb powerhouse of a unit altogether. Now that you might be thinking, well now since that you've covered your 5 out of 5s, what else are left? Well, under the category of highest priority, I got some entries that while I don't think should take precedence of anything I mentioned previously, I think any player would have a lot of use for them. Let's start with this next portion of the list. This is going to be interesting, or maybe even a controversial pick, but Zhong Li was one of my most used units after I got him. I plan on doing a full guide on why I think he is still an extremely solid unit, but the bottom line is that his shield literally makes you invincible. When exploring overworld, having it up essentially negates any need for a healer, and you don't even need to learn how to dodge. Of course, if you do plan on bringing him to floor 12 Spiral Abyss, you can run into some problems where your damage doesn't quite catch up with the timer, and those Consecrated Beasts do so much damage that you still have to learn how to dodge correctly. However, Genshin is a game that's designed for casual play. I personally know some endgame players that don't even attempt the Abyss, because it's optional. So if you value comfort over raw damage, this old man is a fantastic addition to your roster, and one you should definitely consider getting. Luckily, he is also an Archon, so expect reruns very frequently. Next up, we have the Raiden Shogun. What used to be a pretty good character to funnel energy to your team while also dealing some decent damage, became even better when Dendro came around. Luckily, you don't even need Dendro in order for her to be good. While Hyperbloom is the de facto meta of the game at the moment, Raiden National is still a team that sees a great amount of play in the Abyss. While it's probably a little overkill for overworld content, it's also one of the most accessible teams that anyone can find success with. Remember the three musketeers I mentioned in the first portion of this video? Well, only with four-star characters, you can basically enjoy a free win on one side of the abyss. Now that's hardcore. Following the trend, Raiden is also an Archon, so she'll be getting reruns left and right. The last character on this list, Yelan, aka Xingqiu, but five-star. Her playstyle is very similar to the 4-star Poet, but as it turns out, being able to run two of the same overpowered characters in one team is pretty good. She pairs very well in Hyperbloom teams and brings out a lot of potential with other main DPSs, like Hu Tao or Yang Fei. Surprisingly, Yelan's best teams run both her and Xingqiu at the same time, even though you can run one of them on either side of the Abyss floor. Being one of the premier Hydro applicators, you can roll for whatever characters you like and she'll likely pair very well with them. Alright, so that's my list of the baseline of the strongest and most universally used units in the game. After you secure these units, then you can branch out and pull your personal wanted characters. After all, sure, you can pull for Waifu or Husbando, but why not get units that will make your Waifu or Husbando even better? Some closing words. Obviously, this list doesn't include any characters that will release in the future that may change the way we play the game. But for a general rule of thumb, Archon characters are always safe targets to go for. Every Archon we've had in the game plays or has played a significant role in shaping the meta. And I wouldn't be surprised the upcoming Hydro Archon will do the same. Anyways, I would love to hear about what you think 
that should be the must-pull characters in the game, and what has worked or not worked for you. Thanks for tuning into this video, and remember, have fun with the game.